All right, YouTube, there has been an anthrax outbreak in Siberia. Apparently what happened is Siberia is having a severe heat wave right now, which happens from time to time. Cue the global warming stuff, obviously. Uh, some of the permafrost has begun to melt. Unfortunately, anthrax spores can last for many, many decades in permafrost. Uh, thus, reindeer have been infected and they've been dying by the thousands. They've quarantined the region. Uh, and now you've got this relatively remote sort of tribal location in northern Siberia uh, where all the reindeer, which people there still they need it for food, uh, are dying off and so Russia has sent in a bunch of gas mask enabled uh, sort of hazmat troops in order to vaccinate people, vaccinate the animals, and try to stop this from uh, spreading any further. Now thankfully, anthrax especially uh, if infected through the skin, has a tendency, if you're treated for it, you tend to live. It's not actually, unless you have like an anthrax bombing and you've got 10,000 sick people at the same time, you can probably control the situation. Uh, anthrax is generally unheard of in most parts of the world. No, but when you've got this vast area of permafrost or near permafrost full of these spores, potentially, no, and then, of course, you have these reindeer herds roving across this land grazing, uh, you could have a bit of a problem. So the Russians have cited uh, remoteness as probably the biggest uh, problem with trying to deal with the outbreak. Now, will it become a pandemic? No, probably not. Um, there have been outbreaks before throughout the world, and they get clamped down on fairly quickly. But this is probably the, the best <laughs> new example I can give of why we really shouldn't be worrying about some fucking disease like Zika that causes a 1 in 10,000 children to be a golem. Uh, when we could be focused on trying to get rid of this sort of disease that actually does have a tendency to wipe out populations of animals, it can wipe out people if, if governments or uh, medical orders don't step in quickly enough. By the way, saying as a libertarian, that's probably one of the only worthy things that federalized sort of government actually applies itself to is trying to stop epidemics, you know, because they could potentially wipe out the world when you have world trade. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, these sorts of diseases are a little bit more problematic. They tend to kill a little bit higher rate than something like Zika. Yeah, I mean, it'd be like wasting your time trying to treat the common cold instead of going after Ebola or something like that. It's just not point, there's no point to it. It's pointless. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to clamp down on it. I know they had a plague outbreak as well not that long ago. They began sort of going around trying to destroy the rodents and, and keep people uh, treated so they wouldn't fucking keel over. China had a plague outbreak, I believe, two years ago in one of its remote provinces. And the Chinese military very quickly lined up their tanks and, their, and so forth around the border of the infected area, didn't let anybody in or out until everybody had been taken care of. Uh, it's a, a bit of a draconian response, possibly, to keep people from being able to uh, travel or, or go to work, potentially, or whatever. But in such a situation, I can understand at least why people would be acting more pragmatically than ideologically uh, to try to stop such a disease. And like the Ebola virus, of course, uh, the international community had to step in, and the response was so retarded, 20,000 people ended up keeling over. Uh, Russia, thankfully, because this is a remote location, there's a fairly small chance that the uh, anthrax would spread beyond the general region if they act in time. Um, and also, this is a sparsely populated part of Russia. It's not exactly like Moscow, where you have millions of people in a few square miles. Not quite the same thing. It's probably not a million people for a hundred miles around in most parts of this region. Uh, that's been infected, far north Siberian Russia. Siberia is about the most inhospitable place you can possibly go either, other than maybe like Kamchatka, where you've also got big-ass bears at even higher concentrations. You know, oh, we're frostbound eight months out of the year. We have like a month-long summer, and then the bears come out, and they steal all of our fucking berries and kill our reindeer. Oh, what a life we lead. I know the Russians announced some sort of program, uh, I think, again, like two or three years ago, where they were going to try to settle people in Kamchatka, actually. Uh, this vast area is large. I mean, it's not that it's not fertile. It's not that you can't farm it or hunt or, or gate and get lumber or something. It's just nobody wants to live there. So they're saying, oh, you learn Russian and you can come here and get free land, you know, free Russian waifu or something like that. Um, 
that's basically the plan. Not a bad idea either. Uh, Russia, if, if it plays its cards right, it could develop into quite a, a powerful nation. It's just that they haven't quite made the transition yet, and unfortunately right now they're being stalled out by oil prices because that's a large proportion of their economy. Uh, I've been critical of Russia before. I don't wish any ill upon the Russian people. I just think that Putin is a little bit of a dictator light. Um, I think it's very, very funny when the Russians, which which fell away from the USSR and hemorrhaged a lot of their land, annexed Crimea for no real apparent purpose other than to get, you know, <laughs> get uh, sanctioned by the rest of the Western world. I thought that was slightly funny. I felt more sorry for the Ukrainians at that point than I felt for the Russians. Um, but yeah, hopefully they clear up the anthrax. Ever. Yeah, it would be a, like a worst case scenario. All the reindeer die, all these Siberian pagans, which is what most of them are. Uh, they end up fucking starving to death next winter because they don't have any meat or something like that. Then they have to start from scratch, you know, people living in like pine bough homes with these reindeer. And they also eat Amanitas quite regularly. So they're, they're, uh, they're my fellow pagan sort of psychonaut brothers, although I, I can't imagine many of them have the ability to put their trip reports on the internet, so to speak. That's about all. Peace out.